Mr. Ed Golterman with the National Anthem. And now look at the referees. That's Dave Newell, your referee for tonight's game. The linesman, Pat DiPuzzo and Dan Shakti. Doug Keane's back in goal after missing a few games with a groin bruise suffered in practice, no less. Doug Sharp, though, before he sustained the injury, and the Bees are hoping he can pick up right where he left off. And Greg Millen down at the other end of the ring in the St. Louis cage always seems to play well against the Boston Bruins. So far this season, though, having a tough time of 4.07 goals against. Bruins looking to snap out of a four-game losing streak. We're just about set to go, so here's Fred Cusick. And Tom McCarthy drives it in wide of Millen. Millen will flip up the board, stopped by Crowder, flipped back to Milbury, wrapped in for Simmer. Simmer digs it free. In front for a closing fork, and he can't get it. Keeps it inside the line, though. A shot wide of Millen. And Cavallini clears it out. A checking line for St. Louis at the start. And the Bruins put on a pretty good offense. Didn't get the shot on, though. And now it's Cavallini up the left wing side. Clearing in. Keen's blocking. Up the boards. It is stopped by Raglan. Raglan to the corner, trying to center it. Checked by McCarthy. Puck is kept in and dropped in front for a high shot and a save on the drive by Bruce Bell, who came in from the left point. Ramage keeps it in. A drive deflected wide. In the corner, Reeds with it. An offensive line here for Durko in front. For Durko, now back to Bell. A shot in front, blocked. And it is iced by the Bruins. Well, it goes all the way to Millen, so they wave off the icing, and St. Louis right back. Reeds forcing the play on Reed Larson. In the corner, Casper back to check the play on Durko. Puck fought for in the corner. Larson. Able to flip it up and out, but pressure by the Blues. Ramage is on defense with Bell. Away to Hunter, the right winger. Pass out, stopped by Larson. Driven back in, blocked by Millen. Taking over Bourgeois. Nevin Marquardt tried to line up a check, didn't work, and back comes Federko. Stopped by Larson. Hits Marquardt. Cuts right wing. Over the line. Three Blues back. They think defense first of all. Now Neely bringing it back inside. And here's a jam now with Bourgeois, the big defenseman, and Nevin Marquard, the disturber for the Bruins, and he takes on the big ones. Well, Charlie Bourgeois tried to tie up Nevin Marquardt. Nevin didn't like it. Let Charlie know it. Of course, Charlie said, hey, you're in my ring. This is the way we operate. But uh, Nevin Marquardt, didn't make any difference how big. Nevin will always stick his nose right in there. Of course, Bourgeois, literally and figuratively, the policeman on this club. He's the son of a royal Canadian mounted policeman. Always thought he would become one. May still yet when he decides he's had enough hockey. But right now, he's going to have a seat along with Nevin Marquardt. His matching penalties will be handed out at 153. Faceoff will be at center ice. Just in front of the St. Louis bench. We're just underway. No score in the game. And the Blues with one shot on Doug Keynes, and that by Bruce Bell was a threat. Here's how the penalty came about. Right of your screen, the stick's up a little bit, and Bourgeois goes right after Marquardt. Ooh, pretty good headbutt against the dasher. Fortunately, he never had that helmet on. Extra penalty to uh, Bourgeois. And the Bruins will have a power play. Uh, Bourgeois, the instigator, they gave him four minutes for roughing, so uh, it looks like Doug Evans will have to serve the extra two for St. Louis. Bruin power play. Mahar for checking on Bork. Off for Larson. Up to McCarthy. Cleared in wide of Miller. Back to Benning trying to move it out, and it's kept in by McCarthy. McCarthy. Pass up, stop, and cleared away by Brian Benning. McCarthy has Simmer on the left. Crowder on the right. Crowder in the center ice. Wing to wing to Simmer. Has a good break here in the shot. And a save by Millen. That was headed for the short side. Bork puts it in. Rebound. McCarthy couldn't quite move it in. A magnificent play by Millen. Moved all the way across for McCarthy's backhander. Crowder keeps it in at the line. Checked by Benning. Fights for it. 
Larson wraps it up deep for McCarthy. McCarthy trying to swing it in front and mill in the story. And he did it on McCarthy on that whooping backhand bid. Fred, I think Greg Millen got that McCarthy shot with his glove. It was a beautiful move by McCarthy, but an absolutely gorgeous, if not brilliant, save by Millen. I mentioned at the top of the telecast that he always seems to come up with big games against Boston. Charlie Simmer will hit short side. He actually missed the stick and hit the side of the net, but watch McCarthy when he gets a chance out in front. Well, I don't know if we're going to have a chance to, to look at the McCarthy move. That was the save. A glove save on Tommy McCarthy. Power play Boston. Regina shot. Deflected wide. Kept in by Bork. Left point. Larson. Bork. In the corner. Gradine. The shot deflected wide. Back for Bork. Hit the side of the net. Neely. Trying to make the play. It's back to Bork. Bork. Flips it in. Johnston for Larson. A drive. A save. Millen. He's the story on this power play. A good one for Boston. And now it's driven out with 34 seconds left on the Boston power play. The three shots to one over St. Louis. But they moved it very effectively early in the game. Haven't beaten Millen. Bork fires in. Millen trying to make the clear himself. And Bork moves it up to the corner. Loses to Mahar, though. And Mahar is able to clear it. Ten seconds on the Boston power play. No score. Opening minutes. At St. Louis. Larson, beautiful move. Off now on the left. And the drive by Carter hit the side of the net. And the Bruins, and he swings another one in near the side of the net. The Bruins are hitting that side of the net. Not getting it quite on. Larson breaks it up. Center ice. St. Louis back at full strength. And a nice looking shot by Carter. Wasn't on the net. Hit just to the right. But the way he got it off. Indicated why he was able to get 19 goals in Moncton. Delayed call now, and they call the Bruins offside. 15.45 left in the first period with the score of Alston nothing, St. Louis nothing. Bruins hockey will continue in a moment. Boudelier, puck driven in. Or checking is Jay Miller. Dean is at center on this line. The big wave here. His Reed's coming up. Left wing. He's the checker on the line with Federko and Hunter. Boudelier around the boards. On the left for Miller. Out for Gradine. Gradine. A lead for Kortnall. Kortnall checked by Federko. In the corner. Bell. Gradine. Miller. Miller down. Fought for. Federko and Bell for St. Louis. Gradine and Miller. No whistle by Dave Newell. And finally it goes to Ramage. Way to Hunter on the right wing. Center ice flipped in wide of Keynes. Keynes up for Portnall. He's broken up by Federko, but he fell down. Simonetti covers. For Jay Miller. Miller's pass. Intercepted by Cavallini and driven back in the Boston end. Boudelier there. The board's trying to move it out. Put a hard hit. Mahar keeps it in. The hit was by Raglan. Back at the right point, Natras fires it in deep. Ricochets around for Cavallini. Checked by Simonetti. Picked up by Courtnall. Good break here with Gradine. Courtnall up the right side, over the line. Looked it for Gradine. Gradine put it on net, but not hard. He's trying to make a pass, maybe. And back comes Bahar. Bahar, a long shot. A save by Keynes, but he had plenty on it. 50-footer. Casper back in the center ice. No score. Casper to Milbury. He's checked. Cavallini broke it up. Puck picked up by Benning. Passed in. Stopped by Bork and cleared out. Casper trying to make a play for Middleton. He can't break in. And St. Louis. Gilmore intercepted Middleton. And the playoff side, unfortunately, Casper was just in his own. And from St. Louis, the score, Boston nothing and the Blues nothing. The draw to Ray Bork at center ice. And a set up Simmer. And the play called offside. 13.40 left in the first period. No score. Well, so far, Greg Millett has been four by six. No other way to describe him. He is the game so far from St. Louis's point of view. You know, when you're going bad, as the Bruins have been struggling, those things happen. It seems like nothing will ever get by. All you can do is keep working, keep shooting. Ramage forced deep by Simmer. Gets it up on the left for Evans. Broken up at the Boston line. 
A defensive battle, save for that Boston power play where they have good chances on Miller. Dillon can't block it in deep. McCarthy trying to put it in front. Can't. Benning checks it. Evans stopped by Simmer. Simmer trying to put it on net and a penalty coming up. Well, they're going to get Ray Board for charging. Uh, excuse me, boarding. I believe we're charging one or the other. You see Dave Newell's side, but Raymond Bork goes off. He just labeled the St. Louis Blue on the left wing. It's uh, Doug Evans who gets nailed right there. Boarding is the call on Raymond Bork, so the Bruins will be short for the first time tonight. Redeen out with Johnston. On defense, Peterson and Larson, 13-19 left. In the first period, no score. Austin, four shots to St. Louis, two. And about three other Bruins. Uh, good drives were just off to the right of the post. Gilmore in the center ice with Hunter and Federko. And it's fed deep for Federko. Circles in the zone. Checked by Johnston and broke it up. Greg Johnston took it away from Federko. And Gradeen down the fourth check as Benning and Natras are the point men. Johnston moves well, pokes it in deeper. Gradeen there battling, jamming it up in the corner. And now it's Gilmore out with it. Doug Gilmore, top point man. One of those digging forwards gets it over the line for Hunter. Hunter in. Benning, the defenseman. A power play goal as Benny knocked it in the empty net set up by Hunter's beautiful pass and it was Gilmore's rush that started it. Well, a guy like Mark Hunter, you have to respect his scoring abilities and he drew a crowd, Gilmore. Nice shift in the line to draw two defensemen. There, Hunter has a good position on Gradeen and with the two defensemen already committed, that leaves Benny free to float in from the left point. Gilmore does the job. He draws both defensemen, Larson and Peterson. Hunter has the position on Gradeen. Just as simple as putting your stick down and making sure the buck hits the stick. That's all there was to it. Power play goal by St. Louis. They lead 1-0. Benning gets his seventh goal of the year. So over the line, they battle again to move it in. Flockhart on the boards. Huck kept in. Bork battling for it. And finally, Casper starts back. 1-0 St. Louis. Fires in, tip wide by Millen. Follow up by Bork. Bork checked on the play along the boards. By Wickenheiser. Knocked out the center ice, covered by Marquardt winding up, but the Blues are all back in position. They think defense. First off, as they lead 1-0, getting the power play score. In the center ice, Hughes trying to set up the play with Flockhart over the line. Flockhart, a speedster, drops it for Bourgeois in, and he scores right through the pads of teams on the defenseman that scored the first two goals. Comes Pazlowski. A shot bounces in, a save. Boudelier clears it around. Johnston pokes it out. May have a break if he can get there first. And he has just checked, but the follow up by Neely in the shot is tipped over the head of Millen. And back now comes Pazlowski, right wing side. A 2-0 lead. Bourgeois getting the second goal. Benning the first. The defenseman have scored for St. Louis. And a steal by Gilmore in deep. Took it away from Carter. Carter now able to get control. Bruins clear it out, but it's covered by Gilmore. Gilmore with Evans and Pazlowski to St. Louis line. Natras flips it in. Winding up is Boudelier by Cavallini, but slowed down. Bruins have to start again. Simonetti has fired this one by everybody. And it will be icing. In the first period of the score, St. Louis 2 and Boston nothing. Now it can't get much worse down 2 nothing. Not even halfway through the period. Score by Cavallini off the faceoff to make it 3 nothing. The draw back from the center, Mahar to Cavallini. Well, maybe it can get worse. Boy, barely enough time to get yourself settled to Cavallini. 
off the faceoff. Rips one inside the far side post, and Doug Keane did not look good on that one. St. Louis has three shots in a row, and they have scored three goals. They have five shots now to four for Boston. And after the power play, it was four Boston and two for St. Louis, and three in a row by St. Louis, and they score. And the Bruins haven't had a shot at Millen. Cavallini from Mahar, the last one. I think Raglan may get an assist, too, on that, Fred. He tapped it back to Cavallini from the side of the circle, or so it appeared. Here's the official scoring. It is Gino Cavallini. Raglan does get an assist with Rick Mahar, who took the faceoff. So Cavallini from Raglan and Mahar. And uh, Terry O'Reilly is going to make a goaltending change. Bill Radford will now come in and take over the goaltending duties. A tough, tough welcome back for Doug Keynes, who had his first real rough night of the season against Hartford and then injured himself in practice three days later has been out ever since said to me this afternoon after practice I just don't want to try to do too much too early I don't think that was the case really the draw back to Bork Bork first shot who off the glove of uh, Millen just went wide Ray Bork had a good scoring bid for Boston then in the corner it's jammed up by Marquardt and by Bell and by Casper the Blues get it Ramage has it and a three nothing St. Louis lead goaltending change Ranford in just about halfway through the first period, a little more. And lose. Off to a big start. Milbury clears it in. Casper checked by Bell. And Reeds starts back. Up for Federko. A lead for Hunter. A race with Milbury. And Milbury wins it. Gets it to Bork. Bork for Casper. Off for Middleton. In his skates. And he put himself offside. Didn't handle it in the old Middleton style moving over the line then and the play offside. You know, when a team has lost four in a row, you might expect them to be depressed, down, lacking enthusiasm. Not the case today in practice. The guys were loose, up, confident that they could get the job done tonight. But now they're going to have to depend on this guy pretty much to do it on his own. The key is not to try to get back all at once. Uh, to just try to play good, solid defensive hockey and Get him one at a time. Miller is back over the line, trying to cut in. The centering pass is broken up by Bourgeois, and he skates it out. In the center ice to Wickenheiser. Wickenheiser drops it for Bourgeois. Save by Ram for the rebound, and he makes the stop on the play as Hughes poked at it. And the Blues keep it in. Wickenheiser is wrapped up by Gradine. Fans are looking for a holding call. Miller throws an elbow at Hughes. Now fights with Bourgeois. They may go out as we get a whistle. Hey, Bourgeois came in and tackled Miller much the same way he came after Marquardt earlier in the period. But the score is St. Louis 3. The Bruins nothing. Let's pause for this message. Back to his shot. You know that Bill Ranford now mentally and physically into the game after taking the bourgeois shot and handling it easily. McCarthy on the draw with Gilmore. And it's Larson moving it out for Crowder. Long shot on Millen, the save. And the rebound at Natras. Natras works it up for Gilmore. Three on three. Gilmore trying to beat Larson. Just checked from behind on the play by McCarthy. He made a good defensive play. Larson now over the line. But there are three blues back. Boy, it's going to be really uphill to get some pressure on Miller. Larson does. The shot deflected into the stands. Well, you're right, because this is a defensive-minded hockey club, despite the fact that they've been given up 135 goals so far on the season. They are a defensive-minded team. They're not an awesome scoring club, that's for sure. Mark Hunter is their prolific goal scorer, and Bernie Federico you can count on for a good amount of points each season. But uh, this club, when it gets the lead, very difficult to move on. The Bruins are just going to have to work the puck, try not to make mistakes, especially in the offensive zone, and just try to take the scoring opportunities as they come. 
Bork winds up at center ice. Three nothing St. Louis as they scored on three shots in a row. They are third, fourth, and fifth shots on net with Doug Keynes in and Ranford replaced him. 7.32 left in the first period. Bork winding up. Johnston is the center. Carter on the left with Neely. Milbury coming out. He spilled. And Mahar takes over. Ramage for Bell back to Mahar as he skates for the opening. He's broken up with a poke check and the Bruins try to come back. Ramage gets the loose puck. Now moving on at Bork has to wait for Johnston to clear the zone. Gets away from Mahar. His pass over the line is broken up. And Cavallini gets it out to Raglan. Raglan wrapped up by Carter. They're going for a holding call as Raglan is hauled down. Milbury starts it back. Away to Bork. Bork. A three on three. St. Louis not being caught at all. And he's forced to just clear it in. Bourgeois moves it around the perimeter and out. 6.36. Left in the first period. That one from Marquardt almost might have hit Newell. Loose puck picked up by Middleton. Simonetti on defense with Boudelier. Boudelier check. Hunter keeps it in. Hunter drops it off for Reeves. A centering pass missed by Benning as he started a cut for the net. Benning scored the first goal on a power play. Bourgeois, Cavallini, the other scores. 3-0 St. Louis. Break here for Durko with Hunter open for Hunter. An aerial pass. Can't handle it. Marquardt gets back, battles with him, and they, they go at it. Hunter and Marquardt. Nevin took a couple right in the face, and now Hunter's really loosened up. Nevin's going to have to rally, Fred, if he wants a split decision on this one. Nothing's going the Bruins' way so far tonight. You know, there's one thing the Bruins could take heart in, though, in the game played at the Garden earlier this season. If I'm not mistaken, Fred, St. Louis jumped out to a 3 nothing or 4 nothing lead that night. The Bruins came back to win it, so still plenty of time. With the score, St. Louis 3 and Boston nothing. Let's pause for this message. Catch. The stick up in the face, no call there. But now the call is made. Hunter is given an extra two for instigating the altercation. Five minutes each for fighting. There Nevin sits, but Hunter has gone to the dressing room as he is given seven minutes. So the Bruins, for the second time tonight, the benefactors of an instigator penalty and have the power play. They had a very good power play, all but scored on it the first time. McCarthy is out with Simmer and Crowder. A lead for Crowder and Benning is able to get it to Reeds. Benning, and he's able to clear it. 5.43 left in the first period. 3-0 St. Louis. And they started their scoring with a power play by Benny. Deep combination pass from Hunter. Larson back. This could be icing. And it is. Well, that's not the kind of play you want when you're struggling to fight back, being down 3-0. Bruins will be back in action again Friday night. The They'll be taking on the Devils at the Fred and Burn Arena, New Jersey, in the Meadowlands. That's our next game coming up Friday night, 7.30. Break away with the Bruins right here on TV 38. St. Louis, a power play goal by Benny. Bourgeois and Cavallini have scored. And there's 130 left on the Boston power play and 527 left in the first period. The Blues in front, 3-0. Blues get the draw. Driven in by Benning wide. Larson for Bork. Leads the rush. Over the line of McCarthy. McCarthy holding. In deep, Raymond Bork. Trying to set up in his point position now, and he switched really with Larson. Gets it back for Larson. Tees it up. Block. Rebound. Crowder can't put it on net. Locked in front. And Hughes check. Broken up by Bork to Crowder. Back for McCarthy, for Bork. Bork checked by Gilmore, broken up, and it's cleared. 49 seconds left. Gilmore breaks up Larson, and he has to regroup. And Pazlowski gets it, loses now to Johnston. Winding up his Boudelier. 
down to 35 seconds left on the power play. Greg Johnston is at center on this line. Fires it in around the boards. Carter there. Going in deep. It is knocked away by Bothwell for Pazlowski. Not out. Simonetti kept it in. Trying to set up a play for Johnston. Johnston hustles. Keeps it in. But Bothwell has it. And he's able to clear. And we're down to 12 seconds on the power play. Boudelier fails to connect with Neely. And it's back in the Boston end. Four minutes left. First period, and the Blues kill off the Boston man advantage. The first time, it was Millen who was the story, but this time, the Bruins did not threaten him. Boudelier clearing in wide. Back for Benning, and he just drops it out. Larson now. A long drive to the St. Louis end, but Ramage is there to cover. And just fires it around the boards. It's blocked. The Bruins keep it in. Middleton behind the net. Casper in front. Courtnall couldn't get it. Couldn't put the handle to it. He was 15 feet in front alone. A quick bang bang play. Bruins start again. Middleton and Courtnall can't move in. And back comes Federko. Check. Puck rolls in the reeds wide. Broken up by Peterson. Peterson trying to come out. Behind the net for Larson. Now to Courtnall with Casper. Casper to Courtnall. Rolled it in. Couldn't poke it in front. A big defensive play there by Flockhart who would not be known for his defense. He's an offensive threat for St. Louis, a speedster. He made a big play. Bruins trying to move it out, stop. Mahar gets it back. Over the line for Cavallini in the corner, checked by Middleton. Three nothing the score. Still seven shots. Here's one by Bothwell. Locked wide in front and a screen of players and a penalty called on St. Louis Raglan as he Took down Bork, 220 left. The Bruins will get that third power play. Well, they've had one really good power play where Greg Millen had to come up big. They had one where they had absolutely no pressure. I'm sure they'll be looking for the uh, former power play when we come back. In the first period, the score, St. Louis 3, Boston nothing. Bruins hockey will be right, comes up and makes an even better one as Courtnall was trying to tap it to the uncovered Rick Middleton all alone out in front of Greg Millen, but Flockhart made an outstanding play, back checking, covering up on defense, made the big block, and we're still at 3 0. But the Bruins have the man advantage with 2.20 left, first period. For Boston, Boudelier and with the puck. McCarthy up front with Simmer and Crowder. Larson away to McCarthy. Pass blocked by Ramage and fired right out. Just can't get the power play flowing. It flowed when the game was scoreless. Now it's different. Boudelier clears it in. Miller takes it up the boards. Boudelier battling. Ramage has it. And it's right to the Boston end. And Bruins not even getting a shot on. They're still listed at just five shots. They had four in the opening minutes. Larson goes all the way, carries over the line, stops, cuts. Gets it to Simmer, man open, Crowder in front, the backhander blocked by Benning and cleared away by Gilmore. Can't clear it out. Stopped by Larson, who made a good play on the right side. Back over for Bork. McCarthy, Larson, the drive, the save, the rebound. It was a high shot by Larson, not the typical low one that you want from Reed. The puck is cleared. Millen made the big stop on Reed Larson. Bruins tip it back over the line. McCarthy. Able to keep it in, going in, cuts in front, beautiful move, and a better save by Millen. What a move McCarthy made, and Millen robbed him. That's twice in this period that Tom McCarthy has been in, made a beautiful play, and has been absolutely robbed by Millen. What an outstanding play this is by McCarthy. Now watch him make a second shift right there, then rip one off, and there's Millen. He makes a stop with the thigh and then grabs the loose puck so it won't come back out to McCarthy. Tommy with such a nice play there. Watch the shift around Gilmore. And then the quick rip shot. Oof. I'll tell you what, Millen has been outstanding. Johnston out on the draw. 
Lose have it not clear. Johnston hustles in the corner, gets it to Carter. Carter behind the net is broken up on the play by Gilmore. But it's not cleared. Bork with it. Bork back up. Right wing side and left wing side to Neely. All the way across for Larson. Just able to tip it up the boards in deep for Johnston. 18 seconds left. Johnston holding. Making a good maneuver there. And now back to Bork. Closes. Fires. Save. Glove save. And it's the right hand of Millen. And it came on that side. And he stopped Bork. Greg Johnson. Very impressive. He has the coaches uh, singing praise the way he has handled himself in L.A. And again tonight on the power play. And there's Millen again. Johnston threaded the needle with a beautiful pass. It was easy for Raymond Bork to handle. Nice and flat. Raymond tees it up. Things one, but there's Millen again. Neely taking the draw. Ten seconds left on the Boston power play. Thirty seconds left in the first period. Three nothing, St. Louis. And he wins it for Larson. Bork in for Johnston. Missed it. What for Neely a hit? Indeed, Johnston has it behind the net. Can't set up Carter. Puck bounces around for Carter. Flipped in wide. Covered by Johnston. Full strength. St. Louis time running out. The shot is blocked by Bothwell. Nine seconds left. Back comes Raglan. Checked at the Boston line. And Bork is back. Two seconds left, though. Too late for Neely. His shot deflected wide. The period ends. Stay tuned. First generation. Featuring an interview with Mike Milbury. From St. Louis. After one period of goals by Benning. They have a 3 nothing lead. Set for a second period action. Here's Dave Shea. All right, Fred, originally uh, Jacques Martin had his checking line out, but when he saw Terry O'Reilly had his checking line out, he made a quick change. So the Mahar line comes off. And now Bernie Federko between Mark Reeds and Mark Hunter on the ice. Actually, Hunter is still in the box serving some time for his fighting plus instigator penalty, so he is not out on the wing. If Lockhart has moved up to play left wing with Federko. We're underway. Bruins looking to get back into it. Down 3-0. Bruce Bell at his line. Taps it ahead for Flockhart, who made a great defensive play in the first period, but he is ridden off the puck by Frank Simonetti, and Rick Middleton is poke checked by Federko. Simonetti and Bell joust. The play is blown dead, and we're going to have a face-off coming. Looking at the uh, Boston Bruins injuries, Dwight Foster did not dress for tonight's action. Played well in Los Angeles. Might have returned too early from the knee injury. Ken Lynn's been out. He's stretched ligaments maybe three more weeks than Gord Kluzak. This five weeks, dating from December 13 after Arthur Scoffert, Michael Telvin out till at least February. Louis Slager out indefinitely. And for the Blues, left-wing defenseman Kent Carlson from Concord, New Hampshire, out with a spinal fusion operation. Eddie Beers, a disc operation. Brian Sutter, indefinitely severe damage to the muscle of his left shoulder. Terry O'Reilly obviously feels the chemistry isn't there with McCarthy, Simmer, and Crowder, so Greg Johnston has now been moved up to center between Keith and Charlie. And I would imagine that Terry now opting to put Tom McCarthy back with more familiar surroundings. That would be Cam Neely and John Carter. Greg Johnston has looked impressive. He's gone from killing penalties and being a third or fourth line winger to now a centerman through necessity with Ken Linsman out, but also seeing some time on the power play. And uh, Terry O'Reilly likes his hard shot and the ability to make a play on the power play. Raymond Bork trying to move over the line. Shoots in wide of Millen Simmer. With the rebound, leads it for Crowder. Keith trying to slide it in the slot. Johnston was knocked down. Millen is able to clear. The Blues on the move. Mahar splits the defense, but Radford is able to clear the zone. Rick Mahar, former BU star, flying. This is Mahar again in on Radford. Still trying to clear along the left wing board. Greg Johnston now looking for Crowder, broken up by Cavallini. Benning, one of the three Blues goal scorers, shoots it in wide. Raglan takes a hit in the corner. Simmer, now Bork over to check. Gilmore centering. Bradford has to hold the short side, and Newell lost sight of the puck. Blew a whistle as Milbury gets into it. There they go. Rick Bahar and Milbury. Mike 
Happy Evans there. Yeah, I think you're right, Fred. I think that was 32 instead of 22 after a closer inspection, which would make it Doug Evans. And he's the checker on the line for St. Louis. And Milbury tangled with him. Pazlowski and Gilmore complete the line. And now penalties being called by Dave Newell. Bruins certainly had their opportunity in the first period. There you see it. Milbury and Evans. And they square off as Ranford went out. Looked like Mike may have uh, inadvertently as they were turning the net gotten his right glove up on the face of Evans. Got booing because they feel that uh, Milbury went walked over to Evans gave him a shove and started the whole affair. Dave Knowles so far hasn't put up any extra minutes. Can't be fighting penalties. I think that'd be roughing if anything. Raymond Bork and Rob Ramage over to Dr. Newell to try to find out what's going on. With the score, St. Louis 3, Boston nothing. Bruins hockey will continue in a moment. Four minutes for conduct. Milbury and Evans going at it. There's the third man in, and that's it. And out goes Gilmore. There's a key player for St. Louis. And a key center ice money. The Boston Bruins are hurting at center. Verdeen is not at full strength. Injured in the L.A. game. Greg Johnston is, while he did play center for the Marlboro Junior hockey team, basically hasn't played center this year. The only full-fledged one would be Casper, who's been a career center iceman. And McCarthy, of course, played his career at left wing for Minnesota, although he's been playing in the middle all season long for the Bruins. Mike Milbury picked up uh, a double minor for roughing, so the Bruins are short right now. Even though Gilmore, the Blues' leading scorer, is gone for the night on the game as conduct, St. Louis has the power play. They scored their first goal on the power play. Benning, who scored it, trying to feed ahead to Mahar, tapped away by Ranford. Mahar in behind the net. Verderko looking to make a play out in front for Hunter, but that was an aerial pass, and Steve Casper is able to clear. Bruins have out Casper with Middleton, Peterson, and Larson to kill off this penalty. Benning up ahead from Mahar. He has Verderko and Hunter with him. Ramage will play the other point with Benning. Benning will carry in and shoot it around the boards. Ranford out to knock it down for Larson. Reed can't get it. Benning shoots in and is saved by Ranford. Middleton can't clear. Benning keeps it in. Tees it up. The shot. Another save by Ranford. Verderko on the backhand is blocked by Ranford. And Bill will hold on for the faceoff. Beautiful stop by Ranford on Benning from the left point. And on the scoreboard, Quebec and Montreal in the battle of that province. And Quebec is in front, 4-1 to one in the second period. What a way to end the year. They go to Montreal tomorrow night. Here is Benning's shot from the left point. And a full bore drive and in a screen. Good play by Ranford. And notice how he's back up and right on that short side and able to pick it off the next bid with his glove. Wickenheiser has come out along with Pazlowski on the power play for St. Louis. Lockhart, Natras, and Bell. Lockhart back to Natras. Wrist shot saved by Radford. Puck loose. Lying there and skated off by Greg Johnston. He'll try to clear and does. Good play by Greg Johnston. Big stop by Bill Radford. Close call. Bruins have 40 seconds left to kill off on this double minor. The roughing for Mike Milbury. St. Louis one for one on the power play, but the Bruins doing a good job of killing this one off. Greg Johnston back for Raymond Bork. Bork and Boudelier are on with Verdeen and Johnston to try to kill off the remaining seconds. Bork can't clear, but Boudelier gets it to Verdeen, and he is able to no, he isn't. It's right along the line. Now it's out at center ice. Back into the Boston zone and cleared by Raymond Bork with authority. Penalty just about up as Bork intercepts. Raymond Bork trying to move on Natras. Bork pulls up. Bruins back at full strength. Shot and a glove save by Millen. Leaves it for Bell. Bell tries to clear and does. Redeem with it for the Bruins. So the Bruins dodge the bullet. It's still 3-0. 16.30 left to go, second period. St. Louis scoring three goals within two minutes and nine seconds in the first period. Bahar for Bell. 
Bruce Bell couldn't handle the pass. Casper maneuvering in the slot. Mark Ward gloved by Nolan and held on. He has done that too many times tonight. Well, the glove operating. He's a right-hand shot. The glove on the right hand. And it seems that the Bruins are firing all of them in that position. This one by Marquardt. Set up by Casper, who made a good move. And had him open for a quick drive. And Millen able to pick it up. Sure to look like Nevin took that one out in front. and really didn't get the full body movement into that wrist shot. It didn't seem like he had a lot of sizzle on it. It was on net. But Millen with that glove needs to be a little bit more, a little quicker, a little more velocity. We're going to beat this guy tonight. He is sharp. Greg Millen. Casper on the draw with Federko. Federko wins it. This is Benning. Benning up along the board. Simonetti has his man covered. That's Reeds. Casper steals. Steve is checked by Benning. Comes back to the point. Simonetti fighting to keep it in. Can't. Baudelaire back at the red line. Backhands it into the zone. And it may have gone up onto the dasher and into the Bruin bench. From the St. Louis Arena, the score, the Blues three, the Bruins nothing. Is underway. Bruins trying to put some heat in the St. Louis end, but the Blues are able to clear. Reed Larson with the bouncing puck at center ice for Alan Peterson. Greg Johnston backhands it into the zone. Benning tried to leap to get it. Couldn't. Zimmer on his off wing. In the slot, Johnston was checked just as he took the shot. Rob Ramage hit it. Cavallini backhands it into the Boston zone. A foot race. Mahar with Larson. He'll go hard into the corner. And Peterson will backhand the puck around the boards. Greg Johnston starts it up ice. Johnston tries to make a shift. It is brought down and a penalty coming up on Rob Ramage. A delayed call. Now the whistle blows. Hooking on Rob Ramage. And in the second period, the score is St. Louis 3, Boston nothing. With McCarthy and Neely, Larson and Bork, Terry O'Reilly tries a new combination. Doug Wickenheiser back to Rick Natras, and he shoots at the length of the ice. Mark Reed's also out there with Tim Bothwell to kill off the penalty for St. Louis, and they've done a good job at that. McCarthy. Fans on the pass. Neely stays on side, but the puck comes back to Reed Larson. Raymond Bork, who's seen a lot of minutes tonight already. To Larson, who fires it in off the boards. Millen slows it down. Reeds. Wickenheiser checked by Larson. Bork can't get the feed from McCarthy. Mark Reeds was right on top of Bork as Tommy tried to connect. Raymond. Nice move around Wickenheiser. Now pulls up. Bork looking to make the play. Gradeen back for Raymond. Bork through the circle. Fakes the shot. Back for Larson. Kept it in. The shot through a screen wide. Missed the net. Brown wants a penalty as Bothwell was knocked down. Natras will clear. Well, the Bruins set up, but... Reed Larson couldn't get the shot on net. He had plenty of traffic out in front. Larson will have to carry it himself. He is checked by Mahar. Mahar finally broke it up. Bork up ahead for Johnston. Greg Johnston on the move down the right wing. Johnston checked by Mahar in deep behind the net. Johnston for Bork. Boudelier will take the shot blocked and deflected wide. Bork passes up the shot. Johnston for Crowder in deep. Keith looking to make a pass. Wanted Johnson. Looking for Simmer. His shot missed the short side. Charlie with that quick wrist shot. Missed the net. Simmer walks out of the corner. Shot and a save by Millen. He'll try to clear himself. Crowder has a stick held by Mahar. Boy, that was an obvious hold on Rick Mahar. Crowder down low. Simmer in front. Fork saved by Millen. That's the save of the night so far. Zimmer put it right out in front for Raymond Bork. Raymond ripped off a quick shot, and Millen somehow got enough of it to keep it out of the net. And the penalty is up. St. Louis back at full strength. The Blues will change up, and they get a nice round of applause from this partisan crowd at the arena. They have done a great job killing penalty. Bruins can't move in for Durko. Trying to get around Larson, looking to feed 
Doug Evans, he was written off the play. Buck along the near side boards. Perderko goes down. Casper digs it out. Now Bothwell and Middleton dig. Mark Hunter at center ice. Perderko offside. And the whistle blows with the score. St. Louis three. Boston nothing. Let's pause for this message. And for Simmer, put it right in front of look where Bork was. And Millen came up with a great start. Blues lead at three nothing as Datras shoots it in. Reed Larson back for the Bruins. Evans knocks it down. Doug Evans tries to center it. Puck still loose. Evans fires. It hit a skate and went wide. Mark Hunter in deep, trying to center. He is checked by Casper and Larson. And Larson moves it up ahead from Middleton. Devin Marquardt tries to back it in the zone and hit the linesman. It's Federico on a partial breakaway shot and a save by Radford. And he squeezes the pads to hold on. Alan Peterson was chugging along, trying to get back on Federico. Bernie hit a dot that Radford stopped. Bernie Federico and a save by Radford. And no rebound. We have 11.38 left. Second period. 3-0, the Blues. Well, so far, Fred Greg Millen has taken whatever Art and Desire the Bruins have been able to muster after falling behind 3-0. He is slowly stripping the Bruins of any desire they might have. Well, those are heartbreaking saves he's coming up with, especially the one on Bork. Well, if the Bruins can get one in, if they get the momentum going the other way, they might have St. Louis back on their heels, but Millen's doing a great job. Neely, center ice, looking for Credine. Thomas is on the move. Cam shoots it in. Millen for Ramage. Ramage takes a hit from Neely. Credine couldn't strip Lockhart of the puck. Back to center ice. Boudelier looking for Courtnall. He is checked by Ramage. Courtnall shot it in the slot. Neely in a save by Millen. Rebound. Neely scores! The puck came back out as Portnall tried to bat in the rebound. It just happened to come out to the left of Millen, and that's where Neely was. And Cam has the goal, and the Bruins are on the board. That's Cam Neely who gets all the Bruins' uh, scores in Los Angeles. Only one score. It was a backhander by Neely, and his one. He's got an open net there. As the billiard shots kept bouncing right for Boston, so Portnall will have an assist, and Gradeen, they kept battling hard. And there was Neely with virtually the open net and the backhander by Cam Neely. So you can remember the Bruins goals clearly. A couple of backhanders by Neely in the last two games and that's been it. Age 50 in the second period. Cam Neely has Boston on the board. And it's 3-1 St. Louis. Let's see how the Bruins respond now. More importantly, let's see how the Blues respond. They're not used to often playing with 3-0 leads. Greg Johnston. Makes the shot, carries in for Crowder, back for Johnson. He is checked by Natras. Cavallini missed the puck. And Crowder hit Cavallini hard, and Cavallini starts throwing punches. And Fred, I've got to think this is another two-minute aggressor call. It's Cavallini and Crowder, 10.39 left, and Newell will be calling the penalties, and Keith still bothered by the rib injury. With the score, St. Louis 3, Boston 1. Let's pause for this message period for roughing as you see Crowder and Cavallini move in there and no penalties called no two minute roughing against Crowder at all just the two minutes against Cavallini and the Bruins have another power play and they're right back in the game on Neely's goal trailing three to one Here's Gino Cavallini suppose if Dave Null wanted to be nitpicky I guess he could have called an elbow on Keith Crowder as Keith inadvertently went up high and knocked the helmet off of Cavallini. That's what got Gino stirred up. But uh, Keith shot a lot of poise. Plus, I don't think he really wanted to get back into it with the ribs still tender. It earned the Bruins another power play. So Cavallini gets the roughing call. The Bruins get another power play. They have a chance to move to within one. Johnston out with Neely and Simmer. Excuse me, Crowder and Simmer. Crowder shot and a save by Millen. Zimmer in behind the net. Charlie holding and looking. Zimmer up high for Larson. Right back for Charlie. 
Browder ridden off the puck by Ram. It's hard. Benning tries to clear. Larson keeps it in. And now it's in the Bruin bench. Raymond Bork had to come over quickly at the line as Reed Larson got tied up with Rick Mahar and couldn't get back to the line to keep it in. Raymond Bork tried valiantly, but Mark Reed came over. And the two of them hit the puck about the same time, knocking it into the Bruin bench. A story of the game so far is Greg Johnston at center. The young man knows how to play the position. Did in junior hockey. Basically has been a right wing when playing with Boston. But uh, he's looked good. Right now, Johnston on between Crowder and Simmer with Larson and Bork at the points. A Bruin power play. What a big goal it would be. Ramage can't clear as Bork keeps it in. Johnston on the left wing boards. Dick Hadley holding, looking to make the play. Simmer down low. Charlie holds. Simmer has trouble. Crowder comes up to bang. Puck comes loose. Ramage tries to backhand it out of the zone. Can't. Bork kept it in. Raymond for Crowder. Crowder tees it up the shot, hit the side of the net. Crowder taps it down low for Simmer. Now Johnston in the corner. Less than a minute to go now on the power play. Bork for Larson. Back to Bork for Crowder. Fakes a shot, centers Johnson. Kind of fanned on it. Crowder couldn't draw it in on the backhand, and Millen is able to cover up. Nice pass. Well, now we've got a lot of disturbance in behind the St. Louis net. But a nice pass. Crowder threaded the needle to Johnston and Freddie just couldn't get good wood on the shot. Johnston misfired. 40 seconds left on the power play. And he was had a nice setup. Looking right at Crowder. Crowder faking. Now gets it across. And Johnston misfired on that one. 40 seconds left on the penalty to Gino Cavallini as Terry O'Reilly sends out Thomas Gradine with Cam Neely, Jeff Courtnall. Bork and Larson still at the points. On the draw, Gradine wins it. Larson tees it up. The shot saved by Millett. Courtnall in the corner. Couldn't get it to Gradine. It was broken up, but Larson fights to keep it in with Wickenheiser. Gradine looking for Courtnall. He falls down. Neely over with Gradeen. 20 seconds left. And Larson fails to keep it in at the line. Reed took his eye off the puck just for a moment to see where Ray Bork was, and it cost Larson a chance to keep it in. Here's Bork on the move, looking for Courtnall. And it is cleared. Pat Hughes was able to tap it out to center ice. Penalty just about up as Courtnall tries to move in. Wrist shot, save. Rebound, Gradeen. Couldn't get a good angle for the shot. And hit it behind the net. The Blues kill off another penalty. And Wickenheiser on the attack with Hughes. Wickenheiser behind Hughes. And skated off by Gradine. Benning tries to keep it in and does. Hughes shoots it wide. A delayed ball coming up against Boston. Oh, a heavy hit by Courtnall on Cavallini. Now ah, Reed Larson touches up and a hooking ball coming against Boston. In the second period, the score is St. Louis 3, Boston 1. Bruins hockey will continue in a moment. And he had it. He put plenty of steam on it. But now, at the other end, Reed Larson caught for hooking with 8.13 left in the second period. A Blues power play. Steve Casper out with Rick Middleton, Mike Milbury, and Paul Boudelier to try to kill this thing off for Boston. Verderko between Hunter and Mahar. St. Louis power play with Ramage and Benning at the points. The Blues will have to go back into their zone and regroup. Brian Benning scored the first goal of the night on the power play for St. Louis. The first of three within two minutes and nine seconds. That's been all the offense for St. Louis. Bahar tried to kick it ahead, but offside was called as the former BU star was in the zone ahead of the puck. The Boston goal by Cam Neely, and of course he had the only score in the Los Angeles game. The Bruins were shut out in Hartford. And the goal's really scarce as the Bruins have injuries to key people. You can take a squad and look at about the first eight to ten players. And they are the keys, and any are injured. Quebec had Peter Stastny out, and along with Hunter, who's still out. And they were in a decline. Peter's back now, and they're in front of Montreal, four to one, second period. Rick Middleton slides it into the St. Louis zone. Raymond Bork and Alan Peterson now at defense for Boston. 
Raymond had a 20 second rest after playing the power play. He's now out to try to kill this one off. Federko in deep. It's Bort looking to clear. Can't. Sails up over the glass and into the seat. So a faceoff coming in the Boston zone to the left of Bill Radford. You're looking at shots in the second period. The Bruins have 10 in St. Louis. Five. The Bruins had a couple of power play opportunities. Failed to score. Neely did score. And overall, to this point now, with 7.32 left, Boston with 18 shots, and St. Louis with 12. Blues still have a minute 19 left on this power play. Benning and Mattress now at the points for St. Louis. Paderko still with Hunter and Mahar. Casper wins the draw for Bork. Raymond backhands it out of the zone. Benning at center ice loses control. Middleton tried to tap it up ahead for Casper. Couldn't. Here's Mahar on the move. Pulls up and falls down. Tried to put on the brakes and lost his footing. Mahar checked by Casper. Can't get it back to the point. Stevie with it is able to clear. 50 seconds left out of the St. Louis power play as Casper checks Natrix. Federko checked by Milbury. Federko still with the puck. Centers. Score! That's Roski. Nice team. Greg Pazlowski for Federko. And St. Louis with his second power play goal of the night. Takes a 4-1 to lead. Now well, the key was Pazlowski had a forehand shot on this one. Federko flipping it along. It's by Milbury and then creates just about a two-on-one. And there's Pazlowski playing, coming in on the off-wing side, able to get the forehand, which gave him a lot of the leverage on Ranford and the goal. And it's a power play score by Pazlowski from Federko to make it 4-1 St. Louis. Well, they give the goal to Ron Flockhart. It looked like Pavlovsky. When it happened, <laughs> get on the replay. We'll see if they change it later. Flockhart was right there with Pavlovsky. It looked like Pavlovsky had position on Flockhart to score the goal, but they say Ron Flockhart. In any event, it's 4-1 for St. Louis. Alan Peterson trying to go wing to wing to Neely, but Flockhart with it. Checked and knocked down by Courtnall. Grenier with it now, just outside the Boston zone. Thomas. A little skating room. Feeds Courtnall. Back for Gradine. Scores! Just like that, the Bruins come right back. Courtnall to Gradine on a give and go. And the Bruins have their second goal of the night. Well, this was Gradine all the way. Made a great play near the Boston blue line. We don't see the start of it, but he comes back. The little neat flip pass to Courtnall back in front for Gradine who redirected it by Millen for the score to make it 4-2. to two. There he is starting. He's just beaten and left back there two of the St. Louis Blues. Now he's on the attack and able to get the return pass to Courtnall. And he made a nice combination play with Courtnall. Not a difficult pass for Jeff to handle. Jeff put it back in front for him. For Thomas Gradine, his fifth goal of the season. And Courtnall has assisted on both Boston goals. Heavy traffic in deep. Neely centered it, and it was intercepted by Bell. And now we've got Cam Neely going with Rob Ramage, and so far it's all Neely. Neely flailing away with the left and a couple of rights, and Ramage goes down. That's when the linesman step in. <laughs> that was all Cam Neely. And Neely centered one that almost set up another Boston score. As he's on a line with Thomas Gradine, they're on the move. The Bruins getting right back in after the power play goal by Flockhart. Six twelve left in the second period. The last score by Gradine from Portnall. And this fight goes to Cam Neely. He's battling Rob Ramage in the corner. They were jamming just after that centering pass. Ramage came in, started to go, and he didn't check number eight, but he should know Neely from this division. Boy. Ramage went in high, not once, but twice. Fooled me once, came on you. Neely said not twice. Well, Cam Neely and Rob Ramage will get fighting majors and have a seat with 6-12 left to go in the second period. That line has been successful. Neely, Courtnall, and Gradine have both Boston goals. St. Louis with three in the first period. And a Rod Flockhart power play goal here in the second period. 
And that makes it 4 2 St. Louis. Greg Johnston now out with Tom McCarthy. Charlie Simmer will be skating the left wing on this line. Different combination. First time this group's been together. McCarthy. Backhands in the slot was behind Johnston. Bork had come up on the attack. Raymond in the corner. Checked by Natru. Centering pass cleared by Phillips. The Blues on the move. Rick Mahar. He's been flying all night. Has his shot blocked. Another shot saved Radford. Cavallini digging for it. Puck loose in behind the Bruin net. Bork can't clear. Natru spans on the shot. Radford came out to knock it down. Natru again deflected wide. Cavallini. It's a pass that almost goes over the glass. The Bruins started back. McCarthy with Simmer and Johnston. Johnston, the good catch up with the pass. McCarthy too far ahead. Bilbrey in deep for Simmer for Johnston, but it never got there. Steve Casper keeps it in at the point. Simmer checked by Bothwell. They battle for Durko now, knocks down both of them with the puck underneath Tim Bothwell and a face-off coming. With a break in the action, let's pause for station identification. This is TV 38, WSBK TV, Boston. Casper with Middleton and Marquardt. Larson and Peterson at defense for Boston. Bernie for Durko to take the draw for St. Louis. Casper wins it. But Mark Reed has it, skates it out for St. Louis. Reed's just backhands a shot toward the Bruin line. Alan Peterson with it there. Good pass for Casper. Larson can't avoid a Mark Reed check, and Reed sends Hunter away. Hunter broken up at the line by Middleton, and this is an offside as Reed and Hunter were both well into the Bruin zone. Well, the Bruins on the scores by Neely and Gradine, proving that. Millen can be beaten, particularly the Gradine one. He didn't have much of a chance on Neely. He was down and out. And Neely had a big, wide-open portion of the net. But the one by Gradine, a quick redirection of the Courtnall pass. So Boston still within range, trailing 4-2. to two. Reed Larson for Alan Peterson. He's checked by Bourgeois. Roderico backhands it into the Boston zone, and Larson clears. Charlie Bourgeois back to get it for St. Louis for Reeds at center ice. Wing to wing for Durko. Holding, looking for Hunter. He was checked by Reed Larson all the way. Marquardt for Casper. Stevie through center ice trying to move on Benning. His drag down. Thought Newell was going to make a call but decided not to. Larson flips it ahead. Casper was in the zone but cleared and uh, there will be no offside. Well, <laughs> I stand corrected. I thought Casper had cleared the zone. He's calling icing as the pass was made from the Boston half of the ice. And Terry O'Reilly is sending out Gradine now. Jay Miller has not played that much. He needs some bench strength at this point. 4.05 left in the second period. Boston trailing by two. Terry O'Reilly and John Cuniff. O'Reilly worked for a half hour after practice today with Jay Miller. Strictly on keeping balance and fighting in the corner to dig the puck out. They were both exhausted when they came off the ice. Well, a shot and a hard one by Doug Evans. Hit a skate and went wide. Bilbrey. Up ahead for Bork. Bork fires it in off the linesman. And an offside will be called. Bad break for the Bruins, but it hit the linesman right at the line and put everyone offside. Looking at the scoreboard, Hartford leads Washington 2-0 in the second period. It is Quebec 4 and Montreal 2 in the second period. Jay Miller is out now with Courtnall and Gradine as Bruce Bell tries to push it up ice. Evans has his pass blocked and knocked back in the zone. Courtnall in a race, drags down Evans hard and Jeff will be going out. Miller's in the corner, so you know there may be more trouble. And invariably, there will be. Jay went into Bruce Bell. Didn't do a whole lot. Bell went down. But Courtnall is definitely going out. A bad penalty at this time by Jeff 
foot no going in the corner you get the arm up and drag the man down and uh, the Bruins can ill afford it with 335 left in the second period trailing four to two a holding call here they come up oh that was a major league hold almost a clothesline if not a clothesline on a score Chicago two Islanders one in the second period Rangers two, Pittsburgh one second period completed New Jersey leads Calgary two to one in the third period of play the other games later how would you like to spend New Year's Eve at the forum tomorrow night when the Canadians and the Nordiques have a return engagement. Oh, gee. What a way to cook and finish up 1986. You have to wonder, will there be anyone left for 87? All right, so the Bruins shorthanded. Courtnall out for holding. Benning and Natras will play the points for St. Louis. This is Mahar with Hunter and Federko. The Blues have two power play goals so far tonight. Benning. Force back into Natrix. Middleton with Casper. Milbury and Bork. Federko over the line for Mahar. Back to the point for Natrix. Just kept it in the zone. Milbury looking to clear. Takes a funny hop off the glass, but kept in and now cleared by Bork. Bruins need to kill this penalty. They have fought back twice from being three down. They trail by two. They can ill afford to be three down going to the final period. 250 left to go in the period. 110 left to go on the St. Louis power play. Federko banks it in off the boards. Ranford out to hold, and Bill may clear himself. Uh oh, he shot it into the seats, and that will be a delay of game against Ranford, and the Bruins now will be two men short. And that'll be for a minute and three seconds. Bill Ranford clearing into the stands. It is automatic, as we've seen this year. And obviously, he was trying to just play it up on the boards. Hit the boards or the glass, failed to do it. I thought he was going to go right up the pike with it, Fred, instead of trying to use the board. He had good control of it, was handling it to make the clear himself with the Bruins shorthanded, and now they are down two men. 2.38 left in the second period, and the Blues with two power play goals already tonight, leading 4 to 2. Blackhawks and Islanders are now tied at three. Quebec, four to two against the Montreal Canadiens. That game played in Quebec. Now there seems to be some question as to who is going to serve the penalty. It had to be somebody who was on the ice, I believe, and Thomas Redine will be the one. Back to Sean McDonough's studio for a preview of our second intermission. All right, John, the Bruins down two men right now and will be short two men. For a minute and three seconds, there's 2.38 left to go in the period. St. Louis leads it 4-2. Steve Casper with Reed Larson and Raymond Bort. They're the penalty killers for a 103, and then Courtnall will be back out. St. Louis has out Hunter with Flockhart now at Federko. Benning and Natras at the points. Rick Middleton is protesting, but he is, uh, Gradeen was going to serve that Ranford penalty and uh, Middleton I guess won the protest it's Gradeen going over to serve it and Casper the lone forward now with a two man advantage for St. Louis all right big draw coming up for Durko against Casper Stevie battles Larson stepped in nicely in front of Rick Mah excuse me Ron Flockhart had cleared Lockhart was looking for the puck. Larson intercepted and cleared. <laughs> Benning. Nice move. Benning in. Shoot. Save by Radford. Short side save by Bill Radford, and the Bruins are able to clear. What a move by Brian Benning as he came over the line. He already has a power play goal tonight. Federko on the right wing to Hunter. Federko with it. 25 seconds and the Brewers will get one back. Benning moves in for the shot. It hit a skate and went wide. It may have hit Hunter's skate out in front. Lockhart for Benning. Natras 
for Flockhart. His pass knocked down and blocked by Bork, and Raymond is able to lay on top of the puck. Sprawled on the ice and a faceoff with nine seconds left in the penalty to Jeff Courtnall. 106 left to the penalty to Bill Ranford, being served by Thomas Gradeen. Getting a drive. Well, this is the one that he rushed on and moved right in. But he was too deep. To hold the short side and he had him, but he was able to do it. He's the defenseman, and the Bruins have just three men in front of Ranford. Milbury killing time by going over and talking to Jeff Courtnall. Faceoff will be to the right of Ranford. Casper and Raymond Bork were uh, just beyond 38 minutes of play. Seems like he's been out for about 30 of them. Casper against Wickenheiser. Puck loose. Back to Bruce Bell. Wickenheiser can't get the pass. Casper intercepts and clears. Benning tried to hit Wickenheiser and Casper stepped in front. So the Bruins get one man back. 50 seconds left now on the delay of game penalty to Bill Ranford. Wickenheiser tries to stick handle through traffic. Can't. Bell has his shot blocked. Bork. Oh, he could have been called for closing the glove on the puck. He carried that for about two strides. No, let it go. Benning couldn't connect with Mahar. This is Wickenheiser, and an offside pass is called. Boston dodged a bullet there, two men short for over a minute, and they held off St. Louis nicely with the three men in front. They played just one up front and the two defensemen back, Larson and Bork, then Bork and Milbury, and Casper the lone forward, and it worked well. A couple of threats by Benning. One was a 40-foot shot, and it struck something in front, went wide of Ranford. The other was the rush you saw in replay with Ranford holding the short side. Now it's down to 32 seconds on the second power play chance. El Federico is out there now with Hunter and Evans. Greg Johnston on the draw. One by Federico. Ramage for Bell. Back to Ramage. 25 seconds left to go. Ranford kicks it to the corner. Little is trying to clear and can't. Evans in deep for Federico. He's broken up. Larson, nice pass to Middleton. Bruins were about to get a man back in five seconds as Johnston carries in. Takes the shot wide. Missed the net. Bruins are back at full strength. Evans at center ice. Will shoot it in the far corner. 30 seconds left to go. Second period. Bruins trail by two. Greg Johnston tried to go wing to wing. The pass was blocked. And Reed Larson will have to go back into his own end for it. Alan Peterson up quickly for Johnston. Hopped over his stick. No icing. 15 seconds left as Bredeen is in to forecheck Ramage. Neely puts a hit on Ramage. Bredeen couldn't get the pass. Bothwell was skated off. Five seconds left. And that should just about do it. Federico, quick shot through the crease. The horn sounds, and we have come to the end of the second period. Stay tuned for our second intermission and a look at some of the Bruins' wishes for 19. On the fence, Milbury and Bork, and Bruins' forecheck, and the puck is cleared all the way down to Ranford. Bork in the center ice can't connect. Deep forechecking by St. Louis, and it paid off. So Milbury starts again. Bork to Marquardt, but his pass is intercepted, and Ramage and Bell control. Middleton for Casper over the line. Forced wide, trying to put it in front. Block gets it. Back for Bork. On edge. Shot wide. Casper rebound. Pinned by Ramage. In the fight for it. Marquardt. And a whistle for a faceoff to the right of Greg Miller. It's important, Greg, for the Bruins to come out and try to exert some pressure, grab a goal here early, and uh, put the, the Blues back on the defensive, have them back on their heels. And we'd like to take just a moment to remind you that the Bruins' 87 calendar is out, and uh, with the $5 purchase price going to Mass General Hospital Sports Medicine Division, some great photographs in this 87 Bruins calendar on the cover. Rick Middleton scoring his 400th career goal. Pick him up at the Bruins Sports Shop or the Piccadilly Pub. 
shot by Courtnaw wide. Gradine got him the draw. Kozlowski down a four check on Peterson. And they wave off icing. No icing. Back to get it. Gradine or Neely. Neely gets it over the line. Is checked in the play. The follow up by Courtnaw. The backhander and the save by Millen. As Courtnaw put that right on coming in, trailing on the right wing side. Evans, a long shot wide of Ranford. Courtnaw back a lead too far for Gradine. And Benning fires it out. Courtnaw right back, clearing in. He has assisted on the two Boston goals. Follow up by Boudelier, drives it in wide of Millen. Bruins fight to keep it in at the line. It is outside the line. And Boutelier knocked it back in at a face-off call. Well, that was close and good hustle by Paul Boutelier. As the puck almost left the zone, it did, unfortunately, by just a whisker. Boutelier hustled up, tried to glove it right at the line, but the linesman was right there on the play and ruled offside. McCarthy centering Simmer and Crowder, 4-2 St. Louis. They got three goals early. Bothwell, Cavallini, out to center ice. Broken up by Simonetti at the Boston line. Now the delayed call and the offside. This broadcast authorized by the Boston Bruins Hockey Club solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any broadcast, rebroadcast, or the use of the accounts and descriptions of this game Without the express written consent of the Boston Bruins, a TV 38 is prohibited. Each team, five power plays. Blues have two of their scores on power plays, and the Bruins are 0 for 5. Simonetti and Boutelier. Up on the right wing side, going for it, McCarthy over the line, checked by Bothwell. Down he goes, and hurdling the players was Johnston. And <laughs> a nice. Nice job. High hurdle. Broad jump more than a high hurdle. <laughs> and here's Simmer fighting to keep it in. Checked by Natras. It's drilled out by Flockhart. Back to get it, Milbury. And his pass up the right wing side for Johnston is outside. With the score, St. Louis 4 and Boston 2. Bruins hockey will continue in a moment. Bay Bork starts it back. Center ice. Fires in wide of Millen. Long rebound, reads on it, and he's able to make the quick clear. That's all they're doing. St. Louis starts their game with defense, and they have a 4-2 lead. And Coach Martin has certainly reminded them, just do the checking, make the quick clears, keep them on the perimeter, and Millen will handle the rest. Well, the Chicago Blackhawks, it appeared, got well against the Bruins about a week and a half ago. They're leading the Islanders 3-2 on the island. At center ice, Federko checked all the way by Markov. Kept in, shot, wrist shot by Hunter. A real threat just missed over the top. Kept in by Reeds now. Casper takes it. Off for Milbury, gets a return pass, breaks for the opening. Middleton with it, back for Casper, still moving. Trying to move in, broken up. The follow up by Bork. Bork backhands it in deep. Casper fights Bell for it there. Marquard digging. Bell able to get it loose. Can't clear it out. Middleton right on him. Good for checking. Now Marquardt, but he can't center it. He is just tackled down by Ramage. And out comes Hunter. Three on two for Reeds. Broken up by Mike Milbury at the Boston line. Just getting untangled. Marquardt and Ramage. Line change here. And Thomas Gradine, who has a score in the center ice, checked on the play by Evans. And St. Louis doing the checking job. Keeping shots away from Millen. Four minutes play. Ranford trying to clear it. Evans kept it in. Wickenheiser drops it. Maslowski stopped. Shot by Evans. Saved by Ranford. Bruins out. Courtnall with it. Hard drive. And he can get so much on a shot. Even center ice. Millen knocked it away. Winding up Evans. Out to Paslowski. In the center ice. Collected by Wickenheiser. Ooh, a testing shot on Ranford. It dipped along the way. It was well out on the drive, maybe 40 feet, but it dipped, and Ranford had it all the way with the glove. Larson starts back, 4-2 St. Louis. Natras intercepts center ice. 
And the Blues, Evans taps it in deep. Ranford clears it away from the onrushing Mahar. Bruin started out, but marvelous checking here by St. Louis. Boston unable to really get a man free and get a shot on. Neely clears it in. They wave off icing. Courtnall is in anyway. Can't center it. Checked on the play. And a puck to center ice again. Boutelier is knocked down by Cavallini. And the player's offside. Cavallini had lost his helmet. And then put a good hit on Boutelier. From St. Louis, the score, the Blues four, and the Bruins two. First period, St. Louis led 3-0. Three straight goals against Doug Keynes, replaced by Ranford. Now it's 4-2, and we're in the third period, 14-40 left. The Boston scores by Cam Neely and Thomas Gradine. Simonetti back for it, and icing called on the play. It's a three-for-all. Three Stooges marathon, that is, running all night from 6 p.m. on, on just tomorrow night. Bring in the new year. Stooges here on TV 38. The Bruins right now looking for a way to find a solution to Greg Miller. They've beaten him twice. They need two more, though. That's the problem. Took them 40 minutes to score two. They have 14 minutes and 37 seconds in order to score another two. Not easy. John Carter hasn't played since the first period. Might have been one of the guilty ones on maybe that third goal by Cavallini in the faceoff. And Hasn't been out there, but he's out at center now, and he played at center mostly for Moncton. Back comes Cavallini, tips it in the Boston end. Battles for it, takes a hit, fought for it, and it's covered by the Blues. The centering pass picked off by Simmer. Trying to come out, can't do it. Mahar checking the play. On the left, Cavallini. On the right, Hughes, a checking line. Up on the right, Carter forced to clear it out. Carter for checking couldn't intercept and it's all the way to the Boston end. Melbury starting back. Up for Casper. Casper bothered by Federko. Gets it to Marquardt. Four men back. And a return pass for Casper. Almost broke in with it. But there were four men back for St. Louis on that play. Well, they are checking mightily. And this is the hardest of work. Casper clears in. Miller knocks it away. Reeds covers. Gets it safely behind the net to Nast Natras. Up on the boards. Bork knocked down by Hutter. Trying to contain it. And Natras works it free. Back on defense is Marquardt. As Reeds gets it over the line. Checked in the play. Stopped by Milbury. Good play. And here's a two on two. And going Middleton. He's in. Oh, and he broke it through the pads of Millen, and it stayed at the crease. A steal center ice, Larson. That was Middleton in, and a great opportunity with Gradine. Went on Millen, one on one. They backed off him, and Millen made the stop. Not too effectively, but he beat Middleton. In the third period, the score, Blues four, Bruins two. Boudelier, wrist shot in, blocked by Benning. Zlowski breaks it out. They're in wide of Ramford. 4-2 St. Louis. Wickenheiser and Larson go to the corner. Neely gets it free. The clear out. Portnall going. Jeff has figured in both scores and he's hammered down this time by Bourgeois. And Benning drops it center ice. The play broken up by Gradine, who has one of the two scores. Moving deep, a shift on Benning, goes behind the net, trying to drop it off to Courtnall, into the corner, Bourgeois there. And it's up to Evans and clear. Center ice, Gradine, trying to get it back, intercepted by Wickenheiser. Fed to the Boston end, eight minutes played, the Bruins have three shots, and a great chance for Middleton, as Larson is back with Boudelier. Drives it in. Bothwell takes over. Natras now to center ice to the Boston line, and that's all he has to do. But the Bruins come back now. Johnston over the line. Natras on him, and he's knocked down by Natras. 
Back up, gets it to McCarthy. McCarthy, trying to get it to Bork. Bork with it. Shot, blocked. And in the center ice comes Mahar, who blocked the shot over the Boston line. Drops it now for the drive by Hughes. It missed and goes all the way to Bell at the St. Louis line. Bork had a good chance, and Mahar in the way. Milbury knocks it down. Bunts it ahead to McCarthy. Over the line for Simmer. Back in for Milbury. He's tied up. Kicks it in deep. Takes a hit from Cavallini. The puck breaks free near the net to the right of Millen, but he's able to pounce on it. Well, Gino Cavallini had Mike Milbury all tied up. Nice little soft touch pass by Charlie Simmer. He led Milbury in, but there was no way Mike was going to get his stick on the puck. That's because Cavallini had Milbury's stick. Milbury just strolled by Dave Dolan today. What do you think about a holding call on that? It did kind of mess up the scoring opportunity. Bill said, nah, not at this point. 11.04 left to go. Bruins go down by a pair. Neely and Gradeen, the goal scorers for Boston. Benning, Bourgeois, Cavallini, and Flockhart. Look at that right there. Cavallini in tow, holding on to Milbury's stick. That was a beautiful pass, too, Fred, by Simmer to send Milbury in. It's it's a shame Cavallini at uh, what has become so popular now. That is a good grab of the stick. Kind of takes some fun out of the game. Now the Bruins digging in as they're down. 4 to 2. 11 4 left. Third period. Casper out with Middleton and Mark Bork Bork and Larson. Federko on the draw with Casper. The Blues have it. Ramage for Bell. Out to center ice. Deflects to Federko, and he's on side. Checked by Bork. He goes in deep. Has it. Drops it in front. Shot is uh, by Reeds. Might have hit the post or a glove by Ramford. Reeds was set up on that one. The Bruins come back. Mark Watt over the line. And takes a heavy hit from Ramage. The play broken up. Larson back to drive it in. 10.33 left. Third period. 4-2 St. Louis. Casper in. To try and steal. Finally, it's called delayed offside against the Bruins. Do you have to wonder, too, Fred? I haven't seen much of Keith Crowder since uh, uh, Cavallini jumped him and started swinging. Keith uh, didn't respond. The Bruins were able to get a penalty on Cavallini out of that for roughing, but haven't seen much of Keith since. I'd have to wonder if he may not have aggravated that rib injury, which is something the Bruins don't need, and they desperately need to have Keith Crowder back. He went tonight feeling about 80%. I saw him in practice. I said, are you 100% yet? He said, no, but I've got eight hours still till game time. <laughs> But he's the type that plays hurt, but uh, you have to keep your fingers crossed that he has not re-aggravated that rib injury. That, that takes a while. Gradeen is out with Neely and Courtnall the line. Larson and Boutelier were just about halfway through the third period. And that was a save by Ranford on Reeds at the Boston end. Bruins trying to move it out. It is kept in. Evans going for it. Kozlowski behind the net. The centering pass goes to the St. Louis end. Benny just fires it away. Don't even have to look. That's what the Blues are doing. Not wasting any time with the puck. Hitting the open man when they can. And everybody masked at that blue line. The great chance, though, by Middleton. In alone. Here's a break now. Left side, Courtnall. Courtnall shot. Easy for Millen as... He was checked on the play and couldn't get full leverage on the drive. Bork winding up. Flipped it over the line and Benning drives it away and this will be icing. With the score, St. Louis 4, Boston 2. Let's pause for this message. On the faceoff, McCarthy, Johnston trying to get a handle. McCarthy does on the boards. Shot blocked. Johnston with it. Fed in deep. McCarthy trying to swing it in front. Drops it back for Larson. The drive. It's blocked. That's twice. Good opportunities by Bork and Larson have been blocked immediately up front. Simmer clearing in. Millen gets it away smartly to Natras. Up on the right to Hughes. And it's worked out of the zone. 
And it's set of rice interception by Johnston Larson now McCarthy over the line two blues right on him and he's hauled down and Cavallini gets it away can't clear it Milbury gambles keeps it in it deflects away a shot here and the save and the rebound Middleton can't get it the shot was by McCarthy the Bruins forecheck but Cavallini has it and breaks it out long shot on Ranford and a save the Blues change up and everybody lines up at that blue line Reeds clears it in the Boston zone Casper there can't get away with it and Federko gets it behind the net try to deflect it in front can't do it keeps it in is hit Casper now around for Middleton who had the best chance of the period he's out a lead for Marquard rolls in on Millen Millen for Ramage the hit by Marquard but the pass to Reeds and it's cleared out it's Hunter one and one with Milbury and a trailer coming up Shot is missed by Hunter. Beautiful wrist shot. He got that away in good fashion, but missed the net. Federko steals on Castle. Clears it in the Boston zone. Boudelier winding up. His pass up stopped by Benning. And the checking is so solid. And here comes Wickenheiser moving in, holding, drops it in front. The net dislodged, though. And a faceoff called in the Boston end. Well, Doug Evans has been getting a thumping tonight, and Paul Boudelier sent him flying into the uh, crossbar and knocked the cage off his pins. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Hartford has won. Whalers beat Washington tonight by a score of 3-1, uh, to one, so they will now take a two-point lead over Montreal unless uh, something changes with the Canadiens. But it's a final now. Quebec 6-3 over Montreal. So right now, the Nordiques have moved ahead of the Bruins into third place unless the Bees can come up with two points tonight. Chicago leading the Islanders 4-3 in the third period on the island. Rangers have defeated Pittsburgh 5-3. Bob Brose now 16-0 lifetime against Pittsburgh. How do you think the Penguins feel when they wake up in the morning and find out Brose is going? New Jersey beat Calgary 4-3. The Devils next up for the Bruins Friday night here on TV 38. A new face-off call to the left of Bill Ranford. In the first 10 minutes, St. Louis, nine and a half minutes actually, St. Louis had a 3 0 lead. Benning power play, Bourgeois and Cavallini. Then Neely in the second made it 3 1. Flockhart a power play made it 4 1. Gradeen made it 4 2. Bourgeois trying to keep it inside the line, and they rule it's outside in face off call. The Blues with injuries had gone seven games without a win, then they beat the Rangers the other night, and now they're in front 4 2. These are great fans here. They love this Blues Club. Bourgeois is about three feet outside the line. <laughs> Clear cut offside of the crowd booing the call. Bourgeois clears in. Bork. Gradine back for Bork. Now Gradine again, and I tell you, they are masked on the line. He tries to go right through himself and can't do it. Pazlowski just clears it out. And Benning from center ice drops it in the Boston end, right on Ranford. Bork trying to come out. Digging, digging. Away to Gradine. Gradine off for Kortnall. Back for Gradine. Tough angle. He drops it in front. Swept in. And his Bork moving in. Can't put it in front. Drops it in the screen of players. And can't connect. Well, I tell you, they had Miller down dead to rights and couldn't make a pay off. Kortnall, Gradine, and Bork. And back now on the right comes Hughes. The shot tipped wide by Ranford. The long rebound, Neely. But he can't set up Portnall. The Bruins are up to seven shots in the period. And that was a frustrating opportunity as Dean Courtnall, and Bork all moved. And when Bork finally got some control, he was too deep. Dropped it in front and nothing happened. Back for it now, Natras. Up on the right for Hughes. Stop, kept in by McCarthy. Away to Milbury, turns, can't get the shot away. Check, battles in front. And it's the Blues getting it. And Hughes breaks. Boudelier coming back. The shot is blocked by Ranford as Hughes stung that one. In the corner, 
a whistle. Well, a great rush by Gradine and Courtnall and Raymond Borg, and then Mike Nobury almost turned the trick. With the score, St. Louis 4, Boston 2, let's pause for this message. Reed Larson trying to clear it out of the Boston end, and Reed's able to keep it in. For Hunter, he's blocked. Larson, a lead too far for Marquardt. And back comes Federko. Floats into the corner. Drops it in front. Picked off by Ranford. And finally a whistle. Well, Billy was quick. Mark Reeds was all set up. Waiting for Federko's pass. Never got there because Bill was quick with that glove. He was hugging the short side. Federko in behind the goal. In deep. Mark Bernie flicking out in front. He's looking for either Hunter or Reeds. He's just out of your pick. And there he is. Bill stuck the glove out. And that was it. <laughs> nothing for Hunter. Nothing for Reeds. 5.05. Left to go third period. Ranford's done a very good job since coming on at 9.52 of the first period. A relief of Doug Keynes. Doug had a tough night. Three goals on five shots. A draw to Raymond Bork. Tries to connect up with Middleton, does. Middleton, center ice, working it over the line. In deep, drops it on, a shot, a save. Mellon, the rebound is knocked away by the Blues. Middleton put the shot on, and the rebound was there, but the Blues covered. Alan Peterson starts it back. That Marquardt didn't see the pass. And Bork has to wind up. Now to Peterson, Casper, three blues back, and the Bruins can't move over that line. Paslowski back. Over the line it goes for Evans. Evans, a shot, kick out save by Ranford. Evans knocked down. There have been no penalties called in the third period. And icing against the Bruins, 4.09 left. The Blues lead by two. Uh, Bill Ranford. Even the bees right in it until they can find a way to beat Greg Millen if they do find a way to beat Greg Millen. Watch Evans tee this up and look at Ranford stand right up to him. Kicked it right out with the left pad. Bill Ranford has looked sharp. Played very effectively in the forum Saturday night. Heartbreaking 2-1 overtime loss. And he has come on again tonight to play excellent goal. Faceoff coming up to the left of Ranford. Redeen, Courtnall, and Neely the line. Wickenheiser on the draw against Redeen. Evans out there with Paslowski. Tudelier, Redeen. The puck is tied up on a faceoff again to the left of Ranford. Third period score is Blues 4. Redeen draws for Boudelier, who's on defense with Larson. Larson breaks it out, center ice. The quick clear in, Courtnall hustles in, can't get it. Around the boards, kept in by Boudelier, shot, save, Millen. He put that on the corner. What for in deep, Neely centered it. It's covered, though, by Wickenheiser. Trying to make the clear out, does. Boudelier jammed up, and a faceoff called right at the St. Louis line. 3.38 left, third period. 4-2 the Blues. Combination of Gradine, Courtnall, and Neely, a combination that was used early on in the season. Put back together by necessity tonight, and they have responded. They have accounted for both Boston goals and have come up with a few other scoring opportunities. They've done a fine job tonight. Shots are nine apiece in the third period. Around the boards, Evans trying to clear it out. Neely checks, keeps it in. In the corner, Courtnall lost it. Redeen trying to get it. Redeen does. Behind the net to Courtnall. Courtnall now to the other side. Moving in deep is Larson. Behind the net, it is stopped and cleared by Evans. And not far enough for icing. Courtnall winding up. He's figured in both, assisted on both Boston goals. He drives it in, getting there. It is Gradine, centered it, knocked away by Millen. 
Milbury moves up the boards to keep it in with Gradine. Pass stopped by Ramage, though. Ramage to Pazlowski, and it's safely out. Cavallini broken up by Bork. Bork checked immediately by Mahar. And a masterful third period of checking by St. Louis. They started with a 4-2 lead, and that's what they have. A couple of good threats for Boston, unable to capitalize on them. Here's St. Louis really tying things up at center ice. Now Bork tips it in. Milbury hustles in. Up the boards goes Simmer. He has it. Cuts in front. A backhander. Oh, hold it. We had a penalty called here. And now Milbury is knocked down on the play. Well, Milbury went to swing out of the corner and tried to lift his stick over the St. Louis player. And I know he hit him in the head with the stick. It was not intentional. There's the slash by Ramage. Milbury was just trying to get back out in the slot and then Ramage with a butt end to boot. Well, Milbury is going to be given at least two for his part. Question is, did Newell hand out anything extra? Tend to doubt it at this juncture. 218 left to go. Penalties being announced. High sticking penalties against Milbury and Ramage at 17. 42. The Bruins won't get a power play. They had their fingers crossed. They were hoping. I want to remind you that coming up Friday night at 7.30, the Bruins will take on the New Jersey Devils at the Brendan Byrne Arena. And then on Saturday night at 7 o'clock, the Bruins meet the New York Islanders at Nassau Coliseum. Catch all the action here on TV 38. Ray Bork arguing a point with uh, Newell. Now with no success, Newell says let's drop the puck. It's McCarthy with Johnston on the right, Simmer with Bork and Larson face off to the right of Millen. 2.18 left, third period, 4-2 St. Louis. Back to Bork. Drive, save, rebound, save Millen as McCarthy put it on. Driven across by Bork, but it's collected by the Blues. And they break it out, Flockhart with Hughes. And just getting back in time was Bork to fouled it up on Hughes and back comes Boston Larson fires in wide rebound taken by Mahar around the boards 152 left Boudelaire jamming with Bell they'll be going out and maybe more well I think Dave Newell has to call a high sticking penalty I don't see how he could possibly give them matching this time since uh, it was Bell that started the whole show with Boudelier. But Dave Newell is not the type that, with about a minute 50 left to go, will hand out one penalty to one team and not to another, as you just witnessed on the Milbury Ramage routine, and Boudelier's going out. The question is, does Bell get an extra two? Well, he's telling Bell, don't bother coming over here. In fact, it's not Bell either, it's Hughes. I think they're going to send them to the dressing room since there's 150 left to go. Well, they're kicking out Hughes and they're putting, they're going to put Boudelier in the box. Now Boudelier will go to the dressing room. Here's how it started. And Johnson stepped in on Hughes. Mattress chat tackled Mattress. Well, we're basically going to get his matching penalties. High sticky calls. Nobody gets a power play. But then again, you really didn't expect Boston <laughs> to get a power play with 150 left. After going the whole period without having to make a call. Noel in the last uh, 30 seconds has called for two matching minors. Milbury and Ramage, and now Hughes and Boudelier. Ramford over to check with Terry O'Reilly, and uh, 150 left. Boston down by two, but may take him out. Redeen with Peterson moving up at left wing, and Courtnall back hoping for a shot. He's got that powerful shot if he can get a handle to it. 
does cross for Larson tipped and Neely couldn't redeflect it toward the net cleared by the Blues they wave off icing 135 left Verdeen can't move out he's checked by Reeds Federko in the corner takes the hit and now Gradine trying to wind up with it. Start out. Portnall is hooked down on the play. The puck is kept in. The shot by Federko deflected into the stands. And we're down to 115 left now. 4 to 2 St. Louis on the faceoff just inside the Boston line. Well, Jeff Portnall trying to plead his case to Dave Dole, but uh, Dave's ears have closed up at this point. He doesn't, doesn't want to listen to any of it. Raymond Borg saying, hey, look. I know you don't want the game to be decided on a penalty, but gee, if it's a penalty, you got to call it. I don't think Dave's ex explanation uh, is being bought by Raymond Bork. What do you think? No way, and we have a time. Puck driven down for Dean in a race, but back goes Benny to win the race and icing call. Well, Ranford was headed for the net in hopes that somebody might beat Benning to the puck and avoid the icing. Now Bill will go back to his crease and the Bruins will do it all over again. Only now there's 109 left. He has played five goals since coming on and stopped 20 of 21 shots. It just was not Doug Keane's night to come back. A little bit rusty after sitting out three with a bruised groin. Actually sat out two with the bruised groin. He sat out the Chicago game and then injured it the following day of practice. Mahar on the draw with Gradine. Portnall back to Bork. Bork checked in tight. Larson just scales it down. Gradine trying to get there first. Prevent the icing. Does it. But Lewis down to 55 seconds left. Third period. Boston home briefly, then New Jersey and the Islanders next to cleared out and Benning on it. Flipped it into the stands and the Blues are getting what they want. A lot of whistles and delays. And total shots are 30 for Boston, 26 for St. Louis. Maybe a face off with about eight seconds left from the St. Louis end. We're moving that way anyway. Must win the draw here, though. This is up to Thomas Gradine. He's got to win the draw. Bruins must get control of the puck. St. Louis gets it. It's right back into the Boston end. And it's going to be awful tough to get Bill Ranford out then. Benning clears it. Back for it, Larson. Larson trying to get away from Mahar and he has trouble. Now Bork up for Courtnall. Ranford is out. But Courtnall made a pass behind Gradeen. And that play didn't work at all. Bork now to Gradeen. Ranford is out. 22 seconds left. Gradeen in deep for Courtnall. Fires it back to Larson. A shot. Wide and high. Gradeen in the corner and eight seconds left. Trying to put it in front. Does. And a score by Courtnall with four seconds left. Jeff Courtnall figures in all the Boston goals as he was set up by Gradeen, but there are only four seconds left. Well, it's what they wanted. Unfortunately, it took too long to get to this juncture. And uh, many face-offs and many ticks of the clock later, Gradeen pushes it out in front. Courtnall, quick wrist shot. Up under the crossbar. Big crowd out in front of Millen. By then, he was down. Here's the pass. It'll go right out through a maze of legs. Courtnall snaps it off. Four seconds left. Ranford, obviously, will stay on the bench as the Bruins will try to, I'm sure, send somebody on the fly, Fred, and just try to win the draw by shooting it ahead. Try to hit somebody in stride, see if they can't break in and bust one off, but it doesn't work shot from the Boston blue line by Raymond Bork handled by Millen and a victory for 